We've seen why the Lagrange method works, but we're going to work with problems of two constraints. Okay, so I'll come, I'll come back to that other problem at some point when I feel a bit stronger. Now, problems with two constraints um, are very similar to the stuff that we've been looking at. So I will do, hopefully, uh, uh, um, an, ex an enlightening example. But let's really see the, the, the situation here. You want to maximize or minimize some function f. And now, you've got two, two constraints. So those constraints might be in the form of surfaces. And so g1 equals 0 is g2 equals 0. And those surfaces will intersect somewhere. What values on these surfaces maximize or minimize, or, or I guess on the intersection of these surfaces, right? They have to satisfy both equations. What values satisfy that and maximize or minimize f? That's the, that's the problem. So it's, the, the method is very similar as before, but you can see the Lagrangian now has sort of an extra term on the right-hand side. So lambda here is one Lagrange multiplier associated with the G, I guess the G1 function or the um, grad G1 function. And this mu is a second Lagrange multiplier associated with this um, expression. Okay, so usually in these problems, the two surfaces associated with these equations intersect and they form some sort of smooth curve. So, here's one surface described by g sub 1 equals 0. Here's another one. They intersect in this green line. Along that green line, where does f have a uh, max or a min value. So let's look at a problem and um, see how, how we solve it. This is just one of your tutorial problems. Um, it's not that difficult, but um, it's, um, you know, the, the, the idea is to get you to understand the method for the two, two constraint case. You may look at the, at the problem we're going to give you and go, I can, I can do that another way. And the answer is yes, you can. But that's not the point of the example. The point of the example is just to get you to, to um, uh, understand the sort of how this case um, is treatable. Okay, so I'm going to just, just do the example up here. So we want to uh, maximize. or minimize the function Okay, so this is straight out of the tutorial problems. So let's, let's have a look at that first. W what does it actually mean? Well, we've got some function up here, f minus z. And this will be something like um, a cylinder. Okay, the points satisfying g1 equals 0 will be a cylinder. And what about G2? What kind of, what kind of um, uh, surface will, will um, G2 equal 0? What's that? Plane. Uh, plane, yeah, right. So think about you've got a plane and a cylinder, and they're going to intersect. So what sort of 
What sort of curve will you get then from their intersection? Some sort of circle on, it, on its side, I guess. Maybe like an ellipse or something like that, right? So you've got this, this cylinder, you've got a plane going through it, you're going to have some sort of slanty, slanty circle or slanty ellipse. We want to find all the points on, the, on, on that curve that maximise or minimise this function. Now, if you look at the, the setup here, you could say, OK, Chris, hang on, I can make z the subject here, z equals, you know, something depending on x and y, and sub that into there. And so I can eliminate one equation already. And then I can just do it using one constraint. That is true. You can do that. Okay? But like I said before, the point of this example is not to find the best method. It's to um, look at the, the, the method where there's two constraints involved. I mean, I would encourage you to use the simplest methods possible. But let, let, let me just show you how it works for the two constraint case. So let's form the Lagrangian. You've got two constraints and two Lagrange multiplies here. Okay, so there's that Lagrangian. Let's find the critical points of L. So we're going to solve the following. All right, so L sub x is going to be something like minus 2 lambda x minus mu equals 0. L sub y going to be something like minus 2 lambda y minus mu equals 0. L sub z is going to be minus 1 minus mu equals 0. And of course we've got our two constraint equations up the top. Okay. So now we have to look at it and make a, some sort of game plan on how we're going to solve these equations. Any ideas? Well, I can see from here, I can come up with a, a value for mu straight away. And if you look up here, I can um, come up, uh, eliminate the mu from the equation involving L sub x and L sub y. So let's look at this um, a, a little bit. So we first recognize that mu will equal minus 1 from here. Now, if you eliminate the mu from 1 and 2, you'll get two possibilities. You get x equals y or mu equals 0. <coughs> now, can anyone tell me why I can rule out the case lambda equals 0? If I put that into this equation, if lambda equals 0, what does that mean mu's got to be? 0. But hang on, mu's minus 1. So I can rule out the case lambda equals 1. OK, so you can ignore that and just see equation B and C. Okay, they're inconsistent. Okay, so let's go with this. We can put um, x equals y into, say, this constraint equation 
and come up with values for X and Y. Okay, so let's say uh, I eliminate the y, I'm going to get 2x squared equals 8. So x is going to be equal to plus or minus 2. Okay, so that's, that's good. We're in a good spot now. Now if x equals plus or minus 2, well, I, I can get y. So all I need now is the Z, the Z value. Where can I get that from? Well, I haven't used this at all. I haven't used G2 equals 0 yet. I've used everything else. So what I can do is sub back into um, G2 equals 0 and find Z. So that's going to be um, minus 3. Um, we're going to get 5. OK, so our points of interest are going to be 2, 2, minus 3, and minus 2, minus 2, 5. Um, how would you sub, like, one of them is negative 2 and the other one is positive 4? Yep. Oh, OK. So, good question. Just a little bit on notation here. When I write it plus, and like a plus on top and a minus on top, and it's connected with these guys, it's either two, they're either both plus or both negative. If, if I switched it over, if I put a minus on top of a plus, it would be positive 2, negative 2. And negative 2, positive 2. Just, just, just notation. If you, if you don't like this, you can, you can write, write out all the values if you want to. Okay? It's, I've just, just saved a little bit of space. Okay? So all we need to do to finish this problem then is to sub these points into our original function and see, compare them. Which one gives the maximum value, which one gives the minimum value? Okay, so I'm going to get 4 minus minus 3, which is 7. And something like um, minus 1. Okay, so this will be the maximum value. This will be the minimum value. So hopefully you can get the idea now. I must admit, we probably wouldn't ask you something like this in the end session exam. It'd be, you'd be pretty unlikely, I think, to, to get a two-constraint problem. Because as you can see, even one-constraint problems can take a lot of time. 